Hello and thanks for joining our presentation. My name is Maxim Abramsky. I'm a Director of Product Management at Edifex and today I'd like to show you how Edifex Smart Trading Platform can help with implementation of interoperability solutions for providers and payers with using of the new HL7 Fire technology. With the value-based care model, accountable care organizations struggle with implementing the true interoperable solutions uh, due to the large variety of different protocols and file formats used by the participating providers. During the presentation, we will show you how ACOs can move from the present state to the future version of the infrastructure, which bases on Edifex Smart Trading Solution and on the FHIR protocol. The story begins with a patient, Jane Doe, admitted to the ER room and uh, during this admittance uh, we'll be using the uh, EMR system called OpenMRS. So we'll start the new visit and we'll capture some patient's vitals, such as the height, the weight, uh, the blood pressure, which was pretty high during this visit which uh, triggered the patient to go to the ER room. So we'll save the visit and we'll end the visit. Now um, the patient uh, visited the ER room, the uh, EMR system captured all the information and the goal is to migrate this information from the non-fire EMR system to the fire-based ACO system. In order to do that, we'll be using Edifex product uh, called X-Engine Server and the design time tool called EEM. We are now looking at the admin console control panel of uh, Edifex application manager. So in order to move the data from the EMR system to the ACO, we'll start the uh, orchestration called the ER admit and ACO update. So we'll just click start. Uh, we'll see that there is a new task and the take task is in progress and it has been completed. Now in order to verify that the data actually made it to the uh, ACOS fire server, we'll be using the simple web page which is capable of connecting to the fire server and retrieving the information. So we'll type the name of our patient, Jane Doe, and we'll retrieve the records. As we can see, there are multiple records in here which were retrieved from the fire server. There is a patient record for Jane Doe. There is some ID associated with it. There is an encounter, which is the emergency admittance, and this is the fire resource, and several observations which were made during the visit, such as the blood pressure, weight, height. So all that confirms that the data made it to the fire server and it is available uh, for all the ACO participants Let's take a look to at access. How server. Now we have switched to back to Edifex application manager to see how this process is implemented. And this process is implemented with help of so-called routes, which are the orchestration in Edifex terms. So in order to do the uh, whole process we need to do multiple things. Using the REST client and REST API we retrieve the data from the EMR system. Based on the information about the patient visits we extract the observations and the encounters uh, in order to submit them to the fire server. And we use the same but outbound REST uh, API components within Xengine server to submit the data to the fire server. So pretty much the whole orchestration can be built without need in any programming or custom coding. You can just drag and drop the components within Xengine server and you can achieve the goal of transporting the data from non-fire compliant EMR system to the ACO. So this concludes our first use case. We were able to achieve uh, the data migration from the EMR to ACO during the uh, emergency ER admittance of the patient Jane Doe. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the continuation of our story about the patient Jane Doe who was admitted to the ER hospital and uh, for whom we were able to pass the data from the EMR to the fire server of the ACO. In this example we will demonstrate how the information can then flow from the ACO 
uh, from the fire server of ACO to the payer side. To do that, we'll switch over to LFX Transaction Management, so we will log in and we will see that there are no transmissions yet for this patient for the last 24 hours. So now, in order to pass the data from the ACO, we'll need to set up the nightly job, which will go to the fire server, pick up the fire resources, and transmit those fire resources into the H07 messages, which can be consumed by the payer side. So once this transmission happens, we can pass this data over to EdFX Clinical Knowledge Pack, uh, UI of which you can see now, and the information will become available for a payer. Now we switch back to EdFX Exchange Server and we'll start the route called ACO Exchange with Payer. So the route has started. Uh, we see that one message is in process and now the message has been processed, which means that the data was retrieved from the fire server, all necessary conversions have been made, and the data made it to the, uh, to the repository of a pair. So we can see that there is a new transmission for the Jane Doe. This is an H07 ADT admit message. So we can uh, take a look at the message itself and see the content. This is the H07 admit. And now we can go to the member journal. So we can search for our patient Jane Doe on the pair side. And we can see all the documents associated with this patient. It includes the current document, which we have just submitted. This is, um, this is the document. And it also shows all the past history of the patient, including the previous uh, admits, previous discharges, CCD documents, HL7 documents, A37 documents, all financial, administrative and clinical data for this patient. So this view allows for the pair to really get the comprehensive view over all the information, including clinical data related to a patient. Now let's take a look at how things are implemented behind the scenes in Exengine Server. To do that, we'll go to the configuration section of the route, which implements the data transition from the ACO to a pair. Everything starts with a, a scheduled trigger. Then we go and pick up the IDs of the patient from the ACO. Once the IDs are obtained, we convert and extract the data from fire resources to the HO7 messages. And finally, the data gets delivered to the EdFX Clinical Knowledge Pack, which is the pair portal. This concludes the second scenario, which began from the fire server of the ACO, and the data was transitioned into the clinical repository of a pair represented by EdFX Clinical Knowledge Pack. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the third scenario, uh, which shows the interoperability with the community providers. In this example, the patient who was admitted previously in the emergency facility, uh, and that facility had sent the claims, financial, administrative, and clinical data to the payer. However, payer could not send the data to the rural provider, to the primary care physician of Jane Doe, because there are no communication between uh, the payer and the provider. So in order to address that, we'll get back to the UI of Clinical Knowledge Pack and we'll leverage the capability of um, EdFX Smart Trading to send the messages via direct secure messaging protocol from the payer side to the provider. So in order to do that, we'll use the update member function of the Clinical Knowledge Pack, which will essentially send the uh, trigger to the to Xengine server and Xengine server, uh, this is the route called care coordination, will begin the process of retrieving the data from the fire server and sending the data through the direct secure messaging. So the route is in process. Once the message gets processed, we'll switch over to the Microsoft Outlook, which is the emulation of the provider ma mailing system. So now we're switching over to Outlook and check for the new mails. We've got the new mail 
which uh, tells that the patient was admitted to the ER facility. There is a CCD document which is attached to this direct secure message so the provider can uh, check out the document and give a call to the patient and schedule the appointment to uh, provide the better care to check what went wrong and so on. So let's go back to Accenture server and check uh, how things are implemented behind the scenes. So there is a inbound trigger from the clinical knowledge pack UI which forces the crosswalk function. The crosswalk function is the special function which provides the capability of determining the email address, direct email address of the PCP. So essentially we're using the edifex pack builder. This is the table which goes from the member ID to member name and PCP direct email. So once the direct email is retrieved, we go through the EMR synchronization, updating the data from the fire server, converting the fire content to the CCD document, send the message to the clinical knowledge pack, and finally send the secure direct message to the PCP. So that concludes uh, the scenario number three, and this ends the circle of care uh, for uh, the patient, Jane Doe. So the patient was admitted to the hospital. Hospital sent the messages, financial admin and clinical data to the payer, and payer was able to send the direct message to the provider who scheduled the appointment and provided the better care for the patient. Thank you. Thanks for listening to our presentation. We'd like to summarize all the results we were able to achieve with Edifex Smart Trading in terms of helping the ACOs and other value-based care providers uh, in terms of the interoperability using the FHIR protocol. In the first use case, we worked with the EMR system which sent the data to the ACO FHIR and this data exchange helped consolidating the information in the ACO. In the second use case, the ACO exchange financial, administrative, and clinical information with the payer using the FHIR protocol. On the use case number three, we provided the coordination of care between the payer and the community provider using the direct protocol. Thank you for your time.